All right, we are live on this Monday morning. Welcome. We are live to the KGNS website, live to the KGNS app. We're live to our Facebook page this morning, and we are also live to our YouTube channel. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We're going to talk about a lecture that's happening this week over at TAMU, Texas A&M International University and a associate professor of astronomy from the University of Texas at Austin will be visiting. It's an exciting lecture, but I will save uh, the information for our guests this morning. We have uh, Peter Davis on the left. He is the director for the TAMIU Lamar Bruni Vergara Planetarium. And we have Guillermo Benavides on the right. He is a, a longtime friend and a partner and benefactor to TAMIU. Good morning to both of you. Thank you for being here. So uh, I'll let, which one of you wants to tell me who the exciting guest will be? Well, uh, our guest uh, this Thursday evening for the this lecture is Dr. Stephen Finkelstein, as you mentioned. Ruben, he is an associate professor at the University of Texas at Austin, the astronomy department. And that's just uh, the tip of the iceberg when describing this gentleman. He's an extremely uh, distinguished in his field. Uh, he is a Hubble Fellow. The Hubble Fellow distinction is, is very high in the field of astronomy. Um, he has lots of accolades to his, you know, in his, uh, on his resume. And I could, you know, uh, spend half an hour describing this gentleman, but I know that we want to get to other parts of this, uh, of this uh, interview this morning. Peter, this is uh, right up the alley for the planetarium. This has to do with the formation of the galaxy. Tell us a little bit about the actual lecture itself. Okay, the lecture, his topic is a glimpse back at the earliest galaxies uh, when they were forming with the James Webb Space Telescope. The James Webb Space Telescope was the most complicated telescope ever designed and it had to be put in a little rocket and taken out into space and it's out in space quite a ways from the Earth, about a million miles away from the Earth at this time. And what's great about the James Webb is it can look back in infrared, not in regular light like we do with our eyes, but in infrared, which is heat. And it can look at those heat signatures from the beginning when all of the universe was, was forming. And that's one of the biggest areas of research that we couldn't do up until this point. But now that James Webb is up there, they can look within 300 million years of after the beginning uh, of, of the universe. And, and what's exciting about that is you can actually see that far back and you can see through the parts where the dust and things are in the way because you're in infrared. So it's very exciting because they want to see how the, the galaxies actually formed in these large groups of galaxies and large clusters that ha can have thousands of galaxies in them. So that, and the scientists have been waiting for a long time for this to happen, so it's it's very exciting. And so that's what he's going to be talking about. Now, this is the, the so this is a look at the earliest formation of the galaxy, is what you're telling me. Yes, that's fascinating. And is he going to provide uh, photos, video? How how is he going to complement the lecture? Uh, yes, he'll have um, photos because they've already, of course, James Webb has been up um, for a while now, so he. He, they've shown some really fantastic pictures when they, they set it up. And it's just very interesting because it has 18 segments and, and they all have to be aligned extremely accurate to be able to look in those short wavelengths like that. And so, um, so they can, it, it's really going to be revolutionary. And so I'm really excited because he's going to, uh, and that's one of his areas. His area of expertise is the earliest galaxy and studying that. So I'm sure he's super excited too, because they, what they want to do is look once they get, they have time on the telescope. They want to look for a very long period in a small area at certain galaxies so they can really see how they're forming back then. Cause that's something in astronomy we're just not sure of. We have an idea, we have our theories. They're all theoretical, but we've not been able to see it. Um, we have our, we have detected the the Webb telescope has detected uh, a, a few very very faint galaxies that appear to be 
400 million years old, and it was the thinking of, of the scientific community in general that this was not enough time for galaxies to form. 400 million years for us is, uh, you know, that's a long time, but in terms of uh, astronomic, uh, you know, uh, distances and whatnot, it's just almost the blink of an eye. Mm -hmm. And we did not think, man did not think that there was enough time for galaxies to form 400 million years after the Big Bang. And by golly, you know, we're, some of our current thinking is we're going to have to rethink some of the the things that that we hold dear and and that our current uh, understanding is uh, pointing to. So that's why this is, you know, so incredible. We're we're finding things that are puzzling us so much, and uh, we may have to rewrite our textbooks after you know more of this uh, study is done. So this research continues. The research and the the work from the James Webb Space Telescope. Yes, there. Um, <laughs> He's actually on the review panel for phase one and the phase one is just ending in about a month and then they're going to phase two and then he'll probably be on the review panel for two. So he, they got him and some of the other uh, UT Austin astronomers did get time on this, on the, on the James Webb. And that's a big deal because there's people from all over the world that are scientists that want to get on that telescope uh, because it's such a unique telescope and it's going to show us so many new things now uh just a reminder to everyone watching peter davis is the uh director for the uh tammy U, uh, lamar bruni vergara uh, planetarium and guillermo benavides on the right is a longtime partner of tammy U and a benefactor uh memo tell me a little bit about your interest in this field this isn't the first lecture that you have uh, brought to tammy U, is it well, sir, I'm, I'm fortunate that I have a good relationship with uh, the uh, McDonald Observatory facility. Uh, I served on the board of visitors for several years and chaired it. And in that association, I was able to uh, meet and rub elbows with a lot of these very distinguished uh, scientists. And I was able to convince a couple of them. It really didn't take a lot of convincing, but uh, I've, I've asked several of them to come to Laredo to speak to our general public and to our students. I might add that Dr. Finkelstein is going to be presenting to the LISD students a Thursday afternoon and then Friday morning. Well, we have the, the lecture Thursday night and then Friday morning, um, the uh, UISD and St. Augustine students are going to be assembling to hear a lecture from Dr. Finkelstein. So yeah, I'm stretching him out as much as I can. <laughs> I'm fortunate, we're fortunate that he was able to carve out some time to come visit us, uh, Ruben. This is an opportunity that our area does not normally, you know, uh, have access to. And it's, it's a real pleasure for me to work with these people and to bring them down and to share them and their thoughts and their expertise with our general public and our students. And last time around it was, it had to do with the, the um, correct me if I'm wrong, the meteor that uh, landed in Yucatan, correct? That was the last lecture that you hosted? Yes, it had to do with the asteroid impact in the Yucatan Peninsula that they thought, we thought that that might have something to do with the demise of the dinosaurs, but they did all this research drilling down into the core um, underneath the ocean there. And they're pretty sure that it changed the climate by 35 degrees Celsius for a group of years, which would be enough for animals that are cold blooded that they wouldn't be able to survive that. And so the, the lecture that, that Dr. Uh, Finkelstein will be presenting, it, are we looking at what we believe to have happened after the Big Bang? Is that what we're looking at in, in, this, uh, in this scenario? We are, we are looking at these faint little uh, smudges that we receive with that infrared radiation that uh, Peter alluded to. And those faint little smudges represent uh, the earliest galaxy. So yes, uh, that's what we think we're looking at. That's fascinating. So the lecture is this coming Thursday. Uh, give me the details. Where Where is this happening? Okay, so the lecture is at 
Thursday evening at 7 p.m., which is the 26th of October, and it's in the Fine Arts Building at TAMIU. So you look for, the, uh, they, they call it the FBA, the Fine Arts uh, uh, Building, and then inside that at the recital hall, in the recital hall, which as you're looking at it from the parking lot, that's the left side of that building. Now, this is absolutely free, correct? Yes, it's free to the public, yes, and anybody who comes. Any any particular age group that this is targeting, uh, or is this just in general for anybody who has an interest? As I mentioned, there is a lecture uh, on Thursday at 2 p.m. for LISD students, and then there's another lecture Friday morning at 10 o'clock for UISD and St. Augustine. So those, those two lectures should be a little more oriented toward our youth and then the Thursday evening presentation is going to be for our general public. I am hopeful that we can have a good turnout for the Thursday evening event. Uh, it makes it more, it makes it easier for me to attract people of, of this stature when we show up in numbers and, you know, separate and apart from all that, it's just such an interesting thing that I think you know, a lot of us should be curious about. Absolutely. So it's Thursday at seven o'clock at the Tamiyu Center for the Fine and Performing Arts Recital Hall. Absolutely free for anyone who would like to attend. Uh, again, Memo, I ask why why the interest in bringing these uh, lectures to Laredo? Well, you know, uh, uh, we don't normally uh, have access. Uh, our general area, Laredo, Webb County, we don't normally have access to to people of this uh, you know magnitude. And uh, I just felt that if I could bring somebody down here and, and share him or, you know, expose him or have him present to our area, that would be a, a good thing. We just don't get these opportunities very often. Yeah, I know Tammy Yu is grateful and I know Laredo is grateful for your contribution. Um, and I'll leave it to either one of you or both of you to any final thoughts, anything that we did not mention? I think this is a very exciting thing. And to go back to your question, I think almost anybody at any, any age, but a, a, especially from sixth grade and on, would be able to understand um, what he's doing because he's going to set it for the general public. And I think it'll be interesting to them, even if they they don't know a lot about astronomy, he'll put it at a level that they can understand. And it's just something, a part of astronomy that even the best astronomers don't understand we know what our theories say it should be but we we have no proof for that so now um with the james webb they're going to be able to look in that and i think it's going to change our view and like you said they're going to have to rewrite our textbooks then um so i think that's very exciting we'd have somebody i mean he's of the caliber that he's on the group that's determining who's going to go on and uh, on the james webb and and make these make uh, have time on the James Webb, so he has a very of a very high caliber, and he's won, as Memo was saying earlier, many awards for his teaching and, and what he's been doing in his research. So, so I'm very excited about it because it's it may change our whole area the way we think everything's formed. Um, I'm just I feel like all of this is above my head, but <laughs> over my head. <laughs> but uh, I think that uh, if you show up, you get a better, uh, much better idea of of what you both are, are speaking about. Uh, uh, final thoughts, Memo? Yes. Um, we humans are can only understand 4%, 4% of what reality out there is. We're, we're trying to determine what the other 96%, mm. we think it's made up of dark matter and dark energy. And we know that they exist because of their uh, influence on gravity. And so things of this nature help us decide if there's maybe a fifth force out there that we don't know anything about. We're still trying to determine that. So the fact that we're so in in the dark, oh, that's a, you know, no pun intended. Uh. The fact that we're, we're making strides like this one to determine what the other 96% of our reality is, is just very exciting. Yeah, uh, you know, so many brilliant minds and yet so much uh, unknown as to yeah. as to the the formation. So it's exciting because it, you feel like almost anybody can can get involved and learn what they what they feel like they'd like to. Uh, Peter, thank you very much. Uh, Memo, God bless you. Thanks for all you do. Uh, God bless both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having us.
All right, so it'll be this coming Thursday at 7 o'clock. Um, there's the information on your screen at TAMU Center for the Fine and Performing Arts Recital Hall. Don't miss it. Uh, once in a lifetime opportunity, University of Texas at Austin Associate Professor of Astronomy, Dr. Stephen Finkelstein, presenting an a lecture on the earliest formation of the galaxy. All right, spread the word and uh, show your support for uh, this uh, important lecture over at TAMU. Thanks for watching. Have a blessed rest of your day.